Hello YouTube, welcome to another League of Legends guide. Today, we're covering Draven, the glorious executioner. Welcome to the League of Draven. Draven's a big time lane bully with high auto attack damage from his spinning axes. He's one of the AD carries with the best snowball potential because of his passive. It stacks based on numerous things and when you get a kill, it converts those stacks into gold. With an ultimate that you can use across the map, this gives you many ways to get this passive into gold. He's one of the few AD carries that can actually duel assassins and is even able to 1v1 almost every single AD carry, at least in the early and mid game. He does fall off later on, but early and mid, he is a monster. He is however very gankable since he doesn't have a built in escape and is very lackluster if you're behind. Hyper carries like Vayne, Tristana and Kog'Ma are a lot better than you late game, but you are much better than them mid game. You have a high skill floor and skill cap, and you also have no wave clear ability. Although your auto attacks are insanely strong, it doesn't matter too much, but if you need to get rid of a wave really, really quickly, you're not really able to unless you waste your ultimate. For our masteries, we go 18 ferocity and 12 gunning, grabbing Warlord's Bloodlust as our keystone mastery. Now most AD carries do go for fervor of battle, but we don't get a lot of attack speed early on. We go for really high damage and armor penetration with some crit, and we make much better use of the Warlord's Bloodlust. We don't have any built-in sustain in our kit, and we don't get lifesteal till later on, so this is a fantastic mastery for Draven. Other than that, focus on getting as much sustain, attack damage, and armor penetration as possible. Draven's a champion with multiple viable rune pages, however this one is my favorite. It is 9 marks of armor penetration, 9 seals of armor, 9 glyphs of attack speed, and 3 quints of attack damage. My favorite build by far on Draven is the armor penetration Yumu's build. To make this build even more effective, we get all that armor penetration from our reds to get through basically all armor early on. We have a massive power spike when we get our Yumus as we can get through all armor. Armor penetration is so good on him with this build that some people even get armor penetration quints. Now, since we don't get attack speed quints like a traditional AD carry, I like to pick them up on our blues. We will however of course have no magic resist and if we are against champions like Sona or Zyra or you know even Karma stuff with AP poke, we could get kinda wrecked. Now you can of course still get away with a traditional AD carry page with you know attack damage reds and attack speed quints but this wouldn't be your optimal setup. For our summoner spells we pick up flash and heal. Flash is a 100% requirement since he lacks a built in escape ability. He's very susceptible to assassins and other champions with gap closers, and this can save his life in many different situations. You of course can flash forward to finish off kills as well, and it's great to flash forward, use your E, and catch somebody off guard, getting you a free kill. As for heal, well it's definitely the best second summoner skill for you. It's great in bot lane specifically because it can save you and your ally. It can sometimes even offer you enough movement speed so you can run away from an enemy chasing you, so you can actually escape with your life. Draven's passive, League of Draven, can be insanely overpowered or not that effective at all, depending on the game you're having. So this is all about getting Adoration stacks. You can get these by catching a spinning axe, killing a non-champion, or destroying a turret. In addition, you generate two bonus Adoration stacks if you kill six non-champions in a row without dropping an axe. This of course means catching your spinning axes is pretty important on Draven. So when you finally kill an enemy champion, you get 50 plus 2 times your stacks extra gold. You however lose half of your stacks when you do die, so if you're having a bad game and you're dying a lot, this passive doesn't mean too much. Either way, early on in the game you want to make sure you're catching all your axes and you're getting all those last hits to get these as high as possible. When you get a lot of stacks, try to communicate that with your jungler so he can give you a gank and hopefully get you to cash in all those stacks. So next is your Q, Spinning Axes, and this is what makes Draven Draven. Basically this ability costs 45 mana and you can have two at a time, but you have to make sure you're catching them. As long as you catch this, Spinning Axe is applied for no additional cost on his next basic attack. So as long as you're catching these over and over again and you are refreshing them properly, you can have these on permanently. They deal a nice extra chunk of physical damage between 45 and 85% AD, which is why he doesn't have to go for a high AD rune page. You're going to have a lot of AD from this ability anyways, and last hitting is going to be very, very easy for you. There's not too much else to say about this ability, to be honest, even though it is your bread and butter. You just make sure you catch them, and you will have buffed basic auto attacks, pretty much. Next up is your W Blood Rush, and it is an attack speed and movement speed steroid. It gives a decent amount of each, and when you catch a spinning axe, it resets Blood Rush's cooldown as well. That means you can pretty much keep activating this over and over again in teamfights and duels, as long as you're catching those axes. You'll want to make sure you're managing this properly by using it in between axe catches so you get all that attack speed. 
Since it gives a nice chunk of movement speed as well, this can be helpful to actually getting to the area you need to get to to catch that axe. It's not like they're really far anyways, but any extra movement speed is nice. Keep in mind though that this does cost 40 mana, and early on obviously you can't spam this ability, so don't do so. Save spamming this for those skirmishes where you really need that extra attack speed and movement speed, or those team fights for escaping, or adding extra portions of damage. Next up is your E, Stand Aside. So you throw out your axes, doing some damage, knocking them aside, and slowing them for 2 seconds. The damage isn't incredible, but the slow is nice, and can land you some nice kills. The best part about this ability, however, is stopping channels and some gap closers. If you time it correctly, you can even stop Lee Sin's Q when he's coming into you, you know, the second version of the Q, so he doesn't actually get towards you. You can use it to knock Fiddlesticks just a little bit back so his ultimate doesn't get towards you, or of course you can use it to stop things like Katarina's ult. When I know I'm way stronger than the enemy AD carry and I'm in a 1 vs 1, I will usually flash forward, land this E, and get an insanely easy kill on that AD carry. It's a pretty solid skill with lots of different uses, and it'll just take some time to learn how to use it effectively. So last but not least is our ultimate, Whirling Death. You can pretty much think of this as an Ezreal ultimate. It even does less damage per unit hit, just like Ezreal's ultimate. Now generally you'll want to reactivate this ability right before it hits an enemy champion because it slowly comes to a stop and then changes direction. This means if you get really good at timing this perfectly, it will instantly hit them twice rather than moving through them and coming back. If you hit a single enemy champion twice, this will do a massive amount of damage considering it's a 110% bonus AD ratio. Whenever there's an enemy champion on the map really low, even if they're across the map, try to get this ability towards them and get a kill with it. It may be unlikely that this will hit, but if it does and you do have a lot of adoration stacks, you can start snowballing like crazy, so take every chance you get. If you're in a team fight, make sure you try to sweep this through the back line as it will do devastating damage and can take half of somebody's health if they're a squishy target. For our ability order, we of course take our ultimate whenever we can for that devastating damage it can do even across the map. We then max our bread and butter ability, Q, Spinning Axe, for all of that nice basic auto attack damage it provides. It also gets your adoration stacks going if you're catching these axes, so it's a fantastic thing to max first. Next would be Blood Rush, it's great on an AD carry since it's an attack speed and movement speed steroid. Now last, although it is a really strong ability since it's a slow and based off of AD, it does have a really low ratio and it's not that fantastic so we leave stand aside for last. So now here are a few additional ability tips. So first you can stand at the sides of spinning axes to catch them, you don't have to be in the middle. Stand aside flash is a great offensive combo to surprise the enemy and get you free kills. When you know the AD carries alone and you have the advantage, make sure you're taking full advantage of that advantage. Yes, that's a lot of advantages. Like I said before, make sure you reactivate Whirling Death right before it hits an enemy champion so they will instantly get hit twice. Also, don't hesitate to use Whirling Death from across the map. Even if it's unlikely it hits, if it does, it can reward you greatly. Try to avoid using Whirling Death to wave clear. It's better to have it for fights or sniping, but it's worth using to defend a tower if it is necessary. You synergize very well with a lot of the supports out there, but these are my four favorites. So as you'll note, the only more defensive type of support I really like to go with is Janna. Her shield is really strong with Draven and makes his axes do absolutely insane damage. She can then also use Monsoon to save you from assassins since you don't actually have a built-in escape yourself. So now onto the supports that can play more offensively and have built-in CCs. So first up is of course Braum. He's very tanky and his Winter's Bite and Glacial Fissure can be used offensively or defensively. He's then also got decent poke and a very strong all-in at early levels and is just honestly insanely OP. The fact that his passive can apply that stacking slow bullshit with Draven is just nuts. It can be pretty easy kills. Leona is then another champion you have great synergy with because her Zenith Blade and Shield of the Daybreak with Ignite is a absolutely broken level 2 combo. When you combo this with Draven's high auto attack damage and his slow from his E, it's really easy kills early on. So my last one listed here is Nautilus, another great champion that can get Draven snowballing. He's very tanky and brings a lot of crowd control. It's a very all in lane, but that is what Draven likes. Now keep in mind, there are a lot of other supports that work really nicely with him, but these are by far my favorites. Braum is one of the hardest support champions Draven can go against. His concussive blows is insanely strong and you may be forced to flash early on so you don't get stunned and die. Unbreakable then also completely absorbs your stand aside and whirling death, which is just absolutely annoying. Alistair is pretty hard for Draven as well. He has very strong CC, and if he is an absolute dick, he'll even push you around and stop you from catching your axes. 
He can then also offer his AD carry some nice sustain in the lane and is insanely hard to bring down when his ultimate is activated. Then there's Jin, easily one of the hardest AD carries for you to face. His kit is really strong against you with all the lane dominance he gets, and the armor penetration build on him is even better than it is on you. In the early game, ask your jungler if you can do golems or gromp. They're easy for you to bring down and can give you a nice advantage in the lane. If you feel like the 2 vs 2 is hard, just play passively and farm as much as you can and get your adoration stacks high and wait for ganks to consume them. Now when you're able to, make sure you abuse your strong laning phase. 2 vs 2 should be rather easy if you have an aggressive support and if they have an immobile champion. Stand aside is great for engaging with your support champion and to stop ganks. It can even be used to stop some gap closers like Lee Sin's Q, just make sure you time it right. In the mid game you should have at least 2 core items and your spinning axes maxed, which will allow you to 1v1 pretty much any AD carry there is. If you've won your lane, try to destroy the enemy tower, then roam mid and help do the same. If you or your team is finding picks or winning team fights, make sure you follow up by taking objectives like Dragon, Baron, or Towers. You'll want to make sure you get a Farsight Alteration once you're level 9 and you buy Vision Wards. You're really gankable, so don't get caught out. Vision Wards and whatnot will help with this. Last, make sure you use Whirling Death to go through the enemy's backline when teamfighting. This can do massive damage to their squishies and give you a really strong teamfight advantage. In the late game, you'll start to fall off a bit. Champions like Kog'Maw, Tristana, Vayne, and Jinx will all start to outscale you unless they've had completely awful games. All your damage is also physical, so if enemies are massing armor, your damage will fall off a lot now. Positioning is also very important at this point. Get as much peeling as you can because you are going to need it. Also, make sure you're being careful for flank attacks by strong engagers like Maokai and assassins like Zed. Use your wards and farsight alteration. You're generally going to have to hit the frontliners. You don't want to be caught too far in the fight and die instantly. You don't have mobility or an escape, so don't fuck up. Last but not least is our item build, and it starts with a Doran's Blade, Health Potion, and Warding Totem. Now there are a lot of different core builds out there for Draven. There is my favorite, which is the Ghost Blade Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer, but there's tons of other ones as well. You've got the more traditional Infinity Edge first into the Bloodthirster type one. You have one with the Dusk Blade for a very high armor penetration, or you even have the Trinity Force build. But anyways, the one I see the most often and I really like myself is the Yumu's Ghost Blade, Infinity Edge, Berserker Greaves, and Phantom Dancer build. For our offensive items, we of course have the two different armor penetration items. We either get the LDR for the more increased damage or the one with Grievous Wounds. Then of course there's the Bloodthirster for the nice damage, shield, and lifesteal. Trinity Force is an item that works pretty good on him as well, but it is not my favorite and I very, very rarely grab it. But it is worth noting as it's not a horrible item. Then of course there's Duskblade if you are going for a very high armor penetration build and you're using Yumu's this and like Ma or something like that, that's a pretty good build as well, but not as good as this build we're using right now. So for the defensive options we of course have the Mercurial Scimitar which is just great for breaking CCs and having some nice sustain as well. Then of course Guardian Angel, great for coming back to life and killing more people even if you've died already. Ma, great against high AP teams if you do need that shield to avoid getting bursted, and kinda same for Banshee's Veil, it's even better if there are multiple CCs. Now believe it or not, you could even get a Randuin's, especially if you're against something like a Yasuo, something with very high crit that is going to get on top of you over and over again so you can actually survive. So for our first example full build, this is almost always the one I go for against a very balanced team. We take the core, take a Mercurial Scimitar to get through any CCs, and an LDR to get through any armor. This is a very high damage build with lots of crit, a great activate on the Yumus, and some really nice armor penetration as well. Now if we're a little bit more worried about our own life, we can then instead get the Bloodthirster and Guardian Angel. We're not going to be able to break CCs and we're going to have very very limited armor penetration since we only have the passive from the Yumus for armor penetration, but at least we can actually live. There are still teams out there that never build any armor, even against a Draven, believe it or not, and this is a great build against teams like that. So that's it for our patch 6.16 AD Carry Draven Guide. For more of our guides, you can go to www.egamingtv.com, and if you're interested in skin giveaways, you can also follow us on Twitter at egaming underscore TV. That's where we do all of our skin giveaways. Other than that, if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you like and subscribe as it helps us out a lot, and thank you guys so so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next videos. Peace.